The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiaki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiaki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome to the Science of Magic, a place where science and magic come together to transform fact into evolving truth. We're coming to you through the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net, and can also be found on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring the wisdom within. There is a place of wisdom within each of us. We all have innate psychic ability. As with all abilities, its strength and how it manifests depends upon the individual and their participation in the process of developing their gift. There are numerous pitfalls in working with psychic information. First, we must learn to recognize when we're accessing psychic information. Our ability to access the esoteric is an integral part of us. We tend to ignore it. Psychic information often comes through the imagination. Psychic ability has been subject to so much hype and hysteria that we tend to look for something much more grandiose than a passing fancy that slides across the landscape of our imagination. Our imagination, though we've been taught to ignore it as invalid, is the facility through which we receive information from the quantum level. The quantum level is what many refer to as the land of spirit or the esoteric. If we're trying to ascertain what will happen in the future, the information we seek is at the quantum level. It's at the quantum level that all things first must form before manifesting physically. Yet without training, even the most naturally gifted individual can be misled by the random information they may access. The shamanic journey trance is one discipline used for millennia to engage the imagination at will, to access the quantum level information. Unfortunately, without extensive training, the practice is subject to misinterpretation and illogical conclusions. For example, one may see a demon form in their journey when asking if they can trust an individual. It's all too easy to interpret this as a demonic possession and run screaming for a priest. The demon may simply be a metaphor, indicating the individual in question is acting outside of their natural expression, rendering them untrustworthy at this time. Information from the quantum level is not readily understood by the logical mind. Therefore, it's often presented in metaphorical form. In order to accurately interpret esoteric information, one must master decoding metaphor. One of the largest mistakes I see budding psychics make is assuming that what they see is always literal. Another challenge is that many of us have a victim consciousness approach to psychic information. What's going to happen to me? A better question is, what do you intend to happen? What's going to happen is passive and therefore has little effect at the quantum level. What we intend is active and creates a matrix around which our desires can form in the ethers. Which brings us to another dilemma. The quantum level is slippery at best. Electrons and protons pop in and out of existence at frustrating frequency. In other words, something may start to form only to disappear before becoming manifest. What is created at the quantum level is not only driven by life itself, but also subject to our reality, our intent and belief systems. For instance, we can be in the process of manifesting something only to lose faith that it can ever happen. The magnetism driven by our will is what pulls our creations together at the quantum level. If we lose faith and give up, our will disengages and everything about to form at the quantum level crashes back into its constituent parts. Therefore, we can only clearly read something about to come into being through our intention, only to have it not come to pass at all, simply because we keep generating the focus to manifest our intent. I would therefore propose that our time and intention is best use making th things happen rather than trying to read the shifting landscape at the quantum level for outcome. 
if we set our intent as to what we want to create and then use our access to the quantum level information to course correct, we can avoid pitfalls, take advantage of the previous provisions coming our way. We can try to ascertain our fate or use the same gifts to co-create our lives through clear intent, following our inner wisdom, and taking right action. Our guest this hour, Kayla Ambrose, is author of The Awakening Psychic. After this commercial break, I'll introduce Kayla, and we'll discuss psychic ability, inner wisdom, and life purpose, so don't go away. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Prior innovative episodes can always be found on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State-certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour, Kyla Ambrose, is your travel guide to the other side, an award-winning author, spiritual teacher, motivational speaker, host of the Explore Your Spirit with Kyla show, and practical, intuitive coach and guide. Author of five books, including The Awakened Psychic, she has taught thousands to connect with their soul path and create a life and career that is in balance with their tune and in tune with their life purpose and goals. Her website, www.exploreyourspirit.com. Kyla, thank you so much for joining us on The Science of Magic. Thank you. It's Kayla, though. Oh, okay. Well, let's call you Kayla. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's two A's. I don't know why I put an I in there. <laughs> English was not my first, as you can tell, I'm sure. <laughs> my name was given to my mother in a dream, so she didn't know what to think of it either. And I grew up in a small southern town where there was no such name at the time. So she had to fight everybody to, to name it back then, too, and it's been that way ever since. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try to get it right for the rest of the hour. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good. Tell, tell me, Kayla, do you think that everyone is psychic to one degree or another? Absolutely. Always have been. It's not something new that's happening. And, uh, you, you know, if you look back in history or you talk to any culture, you'll see that everyone's had psychic ability. And there are always guides and helpers that, you know, would help, whether it's a shaman or a guru or a priest or, you know, at the time or priestess. Uh, there were some that maybe went a little further with it and the, like the oracles and did it for a living, but everyone relied on their psychic ability. Um, we just called it different names, maybe a gut feeling, a intuition, a, a dream that, that told us something. We all have it. We used to be taught how to uh, connect with it, and that's really the only thing that's changed is as we've modernized, we kind of have pulled away from our intuitive selves. And if I have anything to say about it, I'm going to help everyone remember to go back to that. So <laughs> that's really empowering too, because if we don't, if we can't t t touch into our intuitive selves, we have to rely on outside sources for information, and that puts way too much power in other people's hands. In my book, it sure does, and we kind of see the state of the world right now by what's happened by that, by giving the power away. And part of that is is not really even our fault. 
time is cyclical. It's not linear, like people say. So we go through different ages where we kind of uh, are more in tune and less. And this last age, the age of Pisces, has been more of the divine masculine. And so the, the age of the divine masculine is really learning how to use your logic, how to build things, how to, to tune in in that logic mind. And so we see that kind of as a stair step evolution. So in that age, uh, you've got people that go to uh, the guru or the master of something and to learn from them. And now we're in the age of Aquarius, which is a divine feminine cycle, which is more about going within and learning. So part of it is the balance within each of us and that duality. We all have divine masculine, divine feminine within each of us, and that's what we're seeking to learn and balance, not just individually, but globally as humanity. So we're coming out of that age of of that divine masculine, very linear, logical, oriented, and opening back up into the creative, intuitive, divine feminine side. So uh, it's it's not anyone's fault. It's just how how we evolve and grow here. So it's it's time to awaken again to the other side and and to embrace it. It seems like this is a fairly balanced time right now when we're coming out of one and moving into the other. How do you see that we can take advantage of that balance? Oh, I think it's a hot mess. I don't think we're in balance at all. And maybe because I'm in the U.S. here, but look at the politics and the economy and we'll really just turn on the news and look at what's happening throughout the world on every given day. Whenever there's a big change or evolution, the the old guard goes down fighting hard. And we see <laughs> we're seeing that. that. With, yeah, with you know, war and uh, struggle and just not wanting to let go of control. And more so when we're in a divine masculine uh, phase that we're ending because there's that sense of not being in touch with intuition. So uh, a fear of the unknown, which is that masculine side within each of us, uh, fear of loss of control and unknown. So it's very hard to let go of that grasp. And each of us, uh, you know, face that individually. Uh, with with things when we're opening up to something new. Most people don't embrace change. You know, most of us, uh, you know, worry about that a little bit. So we're seeing it globally, I think, in the world, the last grasp of the old guard as we pull bit by bit through, and, and individually we face this as well. And I talk about that in my first book that was written in, back in 2007, and Nine Life-Altering Lessons, and I talk about that in there, that... Um, you know, it's just the ages and the cycles and the way we go, and we don't want to to let go of that. But uh, we always do. The cycles have a way. The stars and the planets and uh, the universe and everything and in divine order and divine timing, we move through these cycles. And uh, here we go again, and here we grow again. So uh, it's an exciting time to be here. I think everyone chose to be here as a soul, as uh, your higher self. You said yes, I'm going to come down into this mess right now and and uh, be part of this change that I want to see in the world. So it's good to remind ourselves of that when we see all the struggles going on personally and, and globally. When I get to reminding myself, I remind myself to read the small print next time before coming in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never do we need psychic ability more than when we are going through change and chaos because the rules are changing around us. Um, do, do you see that the case, and, and how do you advise people with that? I do, and you know, I, I love astrology too, and maybe because I'm a Capricorn. I love to teach the practical aspects of being a psychic. So uh, I really help entrepreneurs tap into how to grow their business or their career uh, to use psychic ability on that because you can use it to see future trends. I I help people. A lot of my clients really are um, in the financial realms in New York, in the political realms in D.C., and in the technical uh, aspects in Silicon Valley in California. That's a lot of the clients I work with. And they're looking for that, the future trends, what's coming up. And so I teach them how to tap into that and see to get a jump on it. So it's very practical. Uh, I teach a lot of uh, parents, a lot of, you know, parents that want to tap into what's going on with their family and their children and have a better connection with them and communication. I teach people how to get along better in relationships and uh, coworkers. Uh, Really, you can use it for anything in life, and that's the thing. It's not... Madam Kayla with her turban talking woo woo. <laughs> it's it's you know it's a it's a normal part. I we call it the sixth sense, but there's other senses too, and we're we're merging into that. And I especially love 
uh, teaching people who really don't know much about psychic ability. Because I'll say, you know, have you ever thought about someone and then the phone rang a minute later and it was them? Or have you ever just had a gut feeling about someone and you're like, I know this isn't right. This this person's trying to pull something over me or I don't trust them. That's your psychic ability. That's your intuition kicking in. We just haven't been taught to, to understand it and to honor it for what it is. And yeah, so this brings me to my next question. How can people recognize when they're getting psychic information? Well, the, the phone call, like I said, is one. The feelings like that. Uh, you know, you walk into a room and you sense something. You sense something's not right, the energy in the room. That's going to tell, that's your intuition kicking in, warning you of that. We have sensors, even in our hair, and there were studies with that in the military where they had Native Americans who were wonderful guides, and they brought them into the military. And once they went into the military, they, they stopped doing as well as they did out in the field. And so they kept trying to figure it out, and they talked to some of the chiefs, and it turned out it was cutting their hair. And hair actually has a lot of sensory uh, ability in it that works like an antenna that helps us connect with that. So they brought in the next group of uh, natives like that and didn't cut their hair, and they were wonderful guides. So the military actually breaks through in a lot of these things. The military has done a lot of work with remote viewing and psychic ability and all those things that that we don't uh, sometimes (laughs) know about unless we research into it. It's fascinating. Um, so there's there's so many things like that that are built in already within us. And sometimes uh, it's in our dreams. That's a little easy one, too. We get a lot of information in our dreams because the higher self and the subconscious kind of take over at that point and can deliver the information versus when we're awake and the conscious mind is taking control. We uh, sometimes are closed down and can't get the information that literally and sometimes, you know, synchronistically is right there in front of us. But we're just too busy with whatever we have going on that day to see it, so it comes in dreams. Um, Well, you know, that also brings me to another question, is how important is being able to interpret metaphor and getting the accurate psychic information that's coming through? Because I know a lot of times we have to really work at interpreting our dreams before we get the accurate intel. One of the things I teach my students is if you have a dream like that and you're not sure, you're not a dream interpreter, so you don't know, uh, is to ask. We all have guides that want to help us on the other side, but they have to be asked. So sometimes it's as simple as saying, hey, guide, whatever you want to call them, uh, I don't understand this dream. Can you send me some message that's more literal to me today? And then look for signs when you're walking around. Maybe uh, literally you'll see a flashing sign on on the freeway or something, or someone will say something to you out of the blue, or something will happen to you that day to give you a deeper you know, understanding of it. And it doesn't really always work just to go to the dream books that have the interpretations because dreams are very personal and unique. And, you know, I want to say we're all like snowflakes in that way, but we are. And so what uh, you may read a dream book and it says, oh, if you dream about a flower, it means this, but it can mean something very different in your dream. So Yeah, you know, I, I teach that in, in the shamanic classes that I teach because the metaphors are actually coming from your subconscious. Now, we have a group subconscious uh, that the dream books try to draw on, but boy, if it doesn't really feel right, then it's probably not the right interpretation. Is that what you see? Yes, and that, that's learning to be your own psychic and being able to use your own intuition and, and the help of your guides as well to help you Uh, you know, delve deeper and understand it and keep a journal of it because the more you do, you can look back and and, uh, not just journal the dream, but journal what happened to you afterwards, if anything of note that kind of corresponded with the dream. And then you begin to build your own dream book so that you can compare and learn. And like anything, the more you practice, the more you work at it, the better you're going to get. So do you see when you're working on behalf of someone else that it's their metaphors that come through rather than your own? It depends. Now, if someone calls me for a dream interpretation, yes, I really delve into that with them. What does this mean to you? Okay, I pick this up in the dream. They're like, oh, I didn't even think about that part. And I'm like, yes, why does a bucket always appear in the dream? You know, what's this bucket? And um, so sometimes I'll help them delve into it like that. But if they're asking me to delve in psychically, then uh, because I read auras as well, that's my uh, other book with Llewellyn, The Awakened Aura, um, and I've taught that all over the country here, is um, to see the aura. So I read the aura. I see karmic markers in there. I see symbols. 
I see what's going on. So I'll read in that uh, as well as look into the other side, look into the Akashic Records, look to see if there's any karmic markers and other things that may be communicating to them through the dream state because they can't get the message through in, in their daily world. So you think we get a lot of messages from dreams when we can't get them in day-to-day life, or do you just get both and need to pay attention to both? I think it depends, you know, on the person, place, and time, but um, I break dreams down in, uh, into four different types, and some of them are teaching dreams where they're trying to show us something to help us grow. Some you know, we're going to have to pick up on the four types of dreams on the other side of this commercial break. Kayla and I will return to our discussion after this short break. You're listening to The Science of Magic on the Exxon Broadcast Network. I'm your host, Wilda Wiecka. Previous broadcasts of thought-provoking episodes can always be found on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. We will be back, so don't you go away. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Kayla Ambrose, author of many fine books, including The Awakened Psychic. Her website, www.exploreyourspirit.com. Kayla, before we went into the break, we were talking about, well, actually, we were talking about some, there's all sorts of different interesting ways that we access psychic information. So, omenology. Uh, is one of them that you mentioned, in other words, seeing omens in ordinary reality. And then you were talking about looking at auras and getting information from there. And then you were just discussing the four types of dreams. So I'd like to kind of touch in on all those. Let's start with the dreams. Sure. And, you know, Golden, you must be psychic because I'm working (laughs) on my new book right now, uh, the next one for Llewellyn, which is The Awakened Dreamer. So I'm writing about dreams right now. So it's kind of funny. (laughs) Yeah, I write about four types of dreams, and I describe them first as teaching dreams, and that's where your higher self journeys to the other side to explore and to learn. I call it a night school. And then there's prophetic dreams where you intuitively dream about people, places, uh, and events that are going to come to fruition. And third are visitation dreams where loved ones and guides in spirit world visit you. And then the fourth I call being human dreams. And those are when you dream about things that are on your mind that you're working through in daily life. And it's important to understand the difference because the the being human dreams can be, uh, you know, tumultuous and emotional, but that you're working through things. The subconscious is helping you work through situations that are stressing you in your life. That doesn't necessarily make them prophetic as something that's going to happen. They're more working through sometimes your fears and your concerns and, and worries and things like that. So it's important to have an understanding of all those. And then if you want to go further to learn how to lucid dream so you're more consciously aware and can alter those dreams and um, you know, receive more direct guidance if you want. 
Okay, perfect. And then, so um, how about the omenology piece, um, that the signs you see in day-to-day life? Can you talk to that a little bit? I think it's always being put there in front of us, and some people have wonderful stories about loved ones on the other side that do that, whether, you know, I've heard so many wonderful stories about dimes and pennies and, and things. I, I have loved ones on the other side that when they want to communicate with me, they will appear in a very specific way. Uh, one of them is always with, with a, a bird, a type of bird that will appear, and if I'm in some part of the world where that bird isn't uh, there, it'll appear on a card or a notebook or a sign in a store. It, you know, there, there's always a way. So our loved ones and guides always find a way to, uh, to send us that information. And if you want, you can actively take part in that. You can say, uh, when you want to show me that you're near, whether you're talking to your guide or a loved one, say, I want to see this. And whatever it is for you, a feather, a dime, whatever item, ask them to bring that near to you so that you know that, that they're actually there and trying to speak with you and to give you guidance. So uh, those things can be very helpful. And when you're not speaking to someone directly and you're asking for more clarity, like in a dream, like I said, you ask literally and and then look for those signs uh, to happen. And there's thousands of ways that they appear. People have the most amazing stories that they tell me about that, you know. So it, it sounds to me like what you're doing here is you're combining your will, you're willing to see information with synchronicity. Is that accurate? Well, synchronicity, I guess, would be one term, but really just, you're just uh, stepping out of, you know, the third dimensional confines of planet Earth. You're raising your energy to a higher vibration where time really doesn't exist in the same way and all things are possible and are have happened. And so you're kind of entering that higher dimensional uh, energy and connecting it with you on the third dimensional plane here on Earth so that you can receive the information that's that's always out there. You're just learning uh, to be a better receiver, like, uh, you know, a, a better cable station, a tuning station. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the practice itself. Um, what do you advise about setting up a safe environment before accessing the esoteric? Do you create sacred space, and, and if so, how? Yes, I'm a big believer in that. Uh, it's just like going on the Internet. You know, uh, hopefully you have some kind of antivirus because there's a lot of stuff out there, right? So uh, if you're opening up to... Psychic McCraffy, I can see it all now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you don't have any virus on your computer, it's it's going to be a rough go. So it's just uh, the same thing. You're going out into the, the other planes of existence. There's a lot going on out there. And you just take care like you do anything else. So um, I advise and I put the... Uh, the prayer and the thought forms that I describe in the book where you raise your arms up in a V and you put the pure white light energy around you. And that's a, an oval white light dome that surrounds your body as well as all your auric bodies. And you ask that only highest and best can be made manifest through to you and that you're fully protected. And the prayer goes in detail about that, how to do it. And not just to do it when you're practicing, but it's just a good thing to do every day. It just charges up your aura energy uh, your chi, your prana, it brings it and directs it. The V that you're making is a very old ancient Egyptian teaching from the mystery schools, which that's uh, what I studied and, and teach. Uh, you know, I say I'm old age, not new age. I teach the old <laughs> ways. And, uh, you know, you're making that V, which is a symbol of the divine feminine, the chalice, which is harnessing that energy, bringing it in and then swirling it through into your body, kind of uh, supercharging you, making you super powered. And so, once you so do now, that, we have, now we have a, a psychic field. shower, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, exactly. And so you're creating this strong, protective energy field. And psychic self-defense is good to practice. Anytime you're opening up to that, uh, you know, you want to be as safe and protected as you can be so that then you can enjoy and know that whatever's coming to you is only for your highest and best good. And that so, just helps so with do clarity. You think- I'm sorry, do you, do you think that accessing esoteric information can be dangerous then? Um, accessing, I, more about traveling, you know, if you're traveling to the other dimensions. But with anything, uh, with any information, uh, it's good to have an open mind, but also to have discernment as well. So to, you know, don't believe everything you read or hear. Uh, you be your own best guide and see what resonates with you. There's not one way or the only way, 
Uh, I believe it's a personal journey, and each person has to use discernment and uh, see what works for them, and that may change. And um, how the mystery schools describe it is like a buffet that you, if you're interested in this type of thing, maybe you come to the buffet and you sample some things. Try this. Maybe you like it and you have some more. Try another. It doesn't work for you. Put it down and walk away. But don't necessarily throw anything away. You may find along your path and on your journey at a later time that something else that, that didn't um, taste so good to you in the beginning now is something that you want more of. And I, I know that works for me with vegetables. I like them a lot more as an adult than I did as a kid. So. <laughs> <laughs> so all spirits or beings you may encounter in the ethers are not necessarily trustworthy. Is this what I'm hearing you say? Oh, I'm sorry. You were breaking up there. Can you repeat that? That's okay. I said, so all the spirits or beings that you may encounter in the ethers are not necessarily trustworthy. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Just like if you were to uh, just go drive to a random neighborhood anywhere in the world right now, uh, would everyone there be trustworthy and completely interested in your highest and best? I doubt it. So why would it be any different anywhere else? Mm. So are there some uh, techniques that you can teach people to be able to make sure that they're they're uh, getting in touch with the trustworthy ones and not subject to the ones that are not? They are, but um, I don't know if I could teach that in a couple minutes here. <laughs> but yes, you definitely want to have, and that's why I say I'm your travel guide to the other side. You definitely want to have a guide or someone that helps you to learn these things uh, before you open up to that level. Um, for most people, if they're beginners, like the question you're asking, you know, for someone who's never done this and is a neophyte, a beginner to this, uh, you want to start by reading up on it and then, you know, working with a group or working with a guide and people that will show you these basic things, how to travel, how to do so safely. Uh, just like if you're traveling, you know, uh, to a foreign country for the first time, maybe you go with a group or, and you study and you read books and you see where to go, where not to go. Maybe you take a group tour and have a guide. Same thing, if this is a beginning thing to you and you're not sure about those things, then yes, you want to. But a lot of what I write about and what I teach about, it's just opening up to your intuition, not at this depth where you're going over to the other side or talking to spirits, but again, more practical, just opening up to your intuition to get information to help you with work or your daily life. Okay, so... um I find that when I'm working with esoteric information, whether it's for me or for someone else, that if I use, um, I'm very, very clear on my intent and use my spirit guides, then I can pretty much rely on what I'm getting because I'm at that point taken to a level of frequency where truth lies rather than things trying to trick, fool, or control. How does one get in touch with their spirit guides in order to have that kind of support? Well, it begins by setting up a daily practice, starting first with some type of meditation and working on building your energy bodies. Uh, and that starts with the aura, where you build up your white light energy, you, you build up a practice of meditation so that you've learned to focus the conscious mind and then to open to the other levels. And then you study these things so that you, um, you know, can go further with it and open up and then safely travel over to the other side and communicate. How can you tell when you're on the other side? <laughs> you know. It's one of those things that you know. I don't know if there's words for it, but if you've been there, you know. You know, I find I'm in both worlds at once. Have you experienced that, and what's it like? My uh, mother and my grandmother called me Spirit Walker, and that's because I came back this way. Always, I remembered past lives from being very young, uh, little girl, so they always call me spirit walker, meaning that I have one foot here on the earth plane and the other always in spirit world. So that's been kind of a constant for me since I was very, very little. I had prophetic dreams then. I would tell family and I write about some of those in my books. Um, you know, I would see loved ones on the other side and communicate with them, see other beings from the other side and communicate with them since I was very little. So I came back in this particular lifetime kind of set, knowing that I was going to do these things, teach these things, and uh, spend a little time in both worlds. And um, like I said, my mother was given my name in a dream, and it's an old Sanskrit name. She had no idea. It means time. And my middle love, name is Renee, which means reborn. So I, I love I the way they come through reborn. like yeah. I love the way names come through our parents like that. So um, what advice do you have for people that weren't necessarily born with a foot in each reality? They're firmly planted on terra firma in this ordinary reality, and they're struggling to get information. What do you do? 
kind of what I said before, though. You really have to study. You need to read up and have a guide and and um, start at the beginning. And, you know, we're talking about people, when you describe that, people that I guess have had no experience and are just opening up to this. So it begins by doing those daily practices, by creating a sacred space in your home, by creating sacred space within yourself, by opening your mind and attuning to these things, reading up on the ones that feel right to you, on the books and the, the take the courses and find a guide or a teacher who will help you with this. And that's so how, how do you create things, that? You know, we go to school. How do you create that sacred space? I think it's different for every person and they find what works for them. Some people create uh, a sacred temple in their home. That gives them We're good. I'm sorry. I shouldn't ask that question because it's a big one. We'll have to pick it up on the other side, Kayla. Kayla and I will be back on the flip side of this commercial break. You're listening to The Science of Magic on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net, the place where altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric create common ground for the betterment of our world. You can always listen to us on www.thescienceofmagic.net. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State Certified Occupational School, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour is Kayla Ambrose. Kayla, we were just starting to have fun with sacred space. I think sacred space is so, so important for anybody, don't you? I do, and uh, I love to give tips about how to create that sacred space in your home, which our home is our temple. It's where we spend the most of our time and uh, should re-energize us and make us feel good about things and so I ask people to be aware of the words in their home and because everything has energy and so what you speak aloud every word that you say there's great energy and power behind it everything begins with the word so I I say to students imagine if you have one of those blue lights like you see in those CSI movies that show you know when there's a crime scene imagine if that blue light you could shine in your house and see all the words that are on the walls of your home what does your house look like and what is it resonating because all that energy is resonating off of the walls so once you think about that it's time to maybe change the energy or renew the energy or heighten it in your home so you know you begin simply by changing what you say creating a a more sacred space with kinder words of love and encouragement and compassion and when you're arguing you catch yourself and maybe Uh, Don't blast out that energy in your home like you might have done before. And then you'll want to do a cleansing uh, ritual. And people, most people are familiar with this and do this, whether they use uh, sage and smudging. Uh, You can also use a bell. You can use sound to clear energy. Uh, And water as well, blessed water. And then you can paint. You can paint the walls. And as you do, put new energy, play beautiful music, speak words that you want. And I even give a description of 
how to write uh, with the paint, the words, and then paint over it so no one sees it but you, but you know it's there. And there's even ground quartz crystal that you can buy in a lot of the big home improvement stores that you can take in your hands. It's in a bag, and you hold the ground quartz crystal, and you put it in your hands, and you charge it with the energy and intention. And then this is in the paint department of those stores. You mix it into the paint. And I've painted my walls with this ground quartz crystal. And as I'm painting, I'm charging it with that energy of love or prosperity or healing, whatever room I'm working on, and literally paint that and charge it with the crystals in the walls. So you're adding to your intention. Uh, Some people use the decorative lettering that's been popular now for many years, and you can get those personalized with quotes uh, that you put. And I really recommend a Himalayan salt lamp and to light those in one of the rooms, which help diffuse any negative energy and also uh, replace those negative ions that we need, that we get, like when we go to the to the ocean and the, the sand and the surf or negative ions. Got it. You know, as, as, I'm listening, as I'm listening to you, it sounds like what you're actually doing here is using a combination of personal intent and frequency. Is that, is that sum it up? Yes, and the best part is most of these things are, you know, easy, affordable, and a lot of them are natural, like the quartz and the salt lamp and water and uh, salt and all these things, you know, they're, they're easily available to us. Gotcha. So let's change the track a little bit. And um, what advice do you have for our listeners that might be interested in seeking advice from a psychic outside of just getting their own information? Well, ask yourself what you're looking for when you go for that reading. Make sure you have very clear questions. And the oracles back in the day, you know, they you would go to them and you'd have an opportunity to ask a question or two to get guidance. So the clearer you are with your intention and your energy, to the question is going to help with your reading. But really what I'm kind of on a mission to do now is to help everyone awaken that ability within them. And not just through me. I'm just trying to put this energy out here in the global consciousness that everyone is psychic and has their own ability. So um, sometimes you may want to use a psychic if you need clarity on something. But the goal, and I think where where we're moving to, is to be your own inner guide. And your higher self has this energy, has this key to to everything on the other side in the higher planes and you can learn to access it and be your own psychic and uh, really that's kind of where we're evolving into and where i hope people go yeah no truer words were ever spoken we really need to start being our own authority although i do have to say i go to people that i have trained and i know um have um good competent skills sometimes when i'm too emotionally involved in something uh, so i'll compare what i get with what they get and get a more um in-depth view have you done that i think that's an excellent point that Compare is is the perfect word that you use there. So it's just helping someone who can step outside of the emotional field uh, for yourself and to help you get uh, more clarity on a situation. And right. that's always helpful, whether we go to a friend, a psychic, um, you know, a therapist, anyone who's helping us get more clarity. But then at the end, we still have to do the work and figure it out and, and follow our intuition because no one knows you better than you. No substitute for rolling up a person's sleeves, right? <laughs> do, you, do you think we're totally subject to fate, or can intent and actions change outcome, even if we've already seen a particular event uh, through psychic ability? We change our outcomes and our destiny every single day. I see these karmic markers in people, and these are things that are brought back from past lives where uh, they're a beacon, and they attract energy to us so that we'll have a certain experience, or meet a certain person, or be in a certain type of activity. And that will continue to bring that experience to us. But our free will dictates how we receive it, how we process it, and how we act upon it. And judging by those those actions and what we do or how we act upon it uh, reflects if it stays, if it dissipates, if it goes, uh, and if we put our life on a new path. So every day, every moment, with every thought, every word, every action, every deed, we are changing the path of our life. And while those beacons may continue to bring some experiences to us uh, until we kind of get it and then it dissipates and disappears, uh, we move into a new place. But we are in complete control of how we choose to to act upon it or let it have uh, any effect upon us. And that is the the great... um, 
secret, one of them, that uh, if we all understand that we are creators and we create every day by doing these things. And so we really uh, affect our destiny in, in many ways by that. And the fates will, you know, bring time and tide like all things, but we can be the captain of our ship and, and sail where we want. You know, you know what I've seen is being the captain of your ship, um, it seems like we live our lives a lot in knee-jerk reaction to stimulus. So, you know, this stimulus elicits this response. And unless we change that, we're going to have the same outcome. How can you use your intuition or psychic ability to start seeing where you're just doing a knee-jerk and you're not really being a co-creator? It has to do with looking within, with self-introspection and observation. And as the old uh, temples used to say, man, know thyself and I will know God, and as they would describe the universe at that time. And so when we self-introspect, when we learn who am I and why am I here, and look within, and, and that's really what I love to teach, the courses I teach are about that, because once you really understand who you are at the deepest level and you're in connection with your higher self, then you have a much clearer understanding of yourself and the world around you. You begin to understand that there's very little that's called universal truth. Most everything in the world is perception. It's a perception that, that uh, you have and that others have based on how you were brought up, what happened to you in your life, what you were taught in your childhood and, and later, and, and how you programmed yourself to feel and believe and judge things. And we walk around judging a, a lot. Um, and that's because that's part of the human condition to to look, observe, judge, and see you know what's going on here. But as we grow and evolve and more into our higher self, we become less about judgment and more about understanding that it's perception and then having the discernment to understand what's going on. And when we're in that higher self, we're in a different energy type frequency. So we don't react the same. We're more in control of the emotions. It doesn't mean that we don't have emotions. We still do. But we understand the emotional reaction. We let it uh, pour through us while still uh, maintaining a sense of understanding what's happening and that we don't have to act or react to it in, in the way that we used to. Got it. So I have a little over a minute left. Um, would you share with us what's the most challenging thing you found about being a practicing psychic? Uh, sometimes, because uh, I'm an empath as well, so as an empath, you feel everything and you feel others' emotions and thoughts, and uh, whether you want to or not, sometimes, and you, so it's more work sometimes to build up kind of a block to not hear all of that about things. When you walk into a room and you can feel and uh, sense and hear what other people are thinking about you, <laughs> that's not always fun. Yeah, I hear you there. I didn't want to know that. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> so I just smile, and even when they're lying to me, I'm like, yes, uh-huh, that's interesting. You know, I don't call <laughs> them out on it. and Just, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So um, in closing, do you have anything to share? Just that I hope everyone uh, awakens to their psychic ability and to trust your gut, trust those gut feelings, trust your intuition. We all have it. Uh, sometimes we see it more in our children because they don't know not to have it. So it's wonderful to encourage that uh, in them as well. And uh, if anyone would like to get more in touch with their spirit guides, if you sign up for my free newsletter on exploreyourspirit.com, I give away a free 30-minute guided meditation called Spirit of Hawaii that takes you on an action adventure meditation where you meet your spirit guide. So oh, if that fun. calls to you and feels you know, good, go for it. Kayla, time flies and we're out of it. Thank you so much for being on our program. This has been The Science of Magic. Remember, you can always listen to past thought-provoking episodes on our website, www.thescienceofmagic.net. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge, comforted with love, as you explore your intuition.